Great, happy to do so. I realize it's a little bit scientific heavy, so I'm going to just show you one concept and one novel data that we out there and the question you're wrestling with. Um, so basically, we're interested in conserved interventions as slow aging. So that's reduced insulin IGF-1 signal, caloric restriction, right? And we have a good understanding how that these interventions improve like epigenetic regulation, DNA repair, and proteins inside of the cell. However, we lack a solid understanding how proteins outside of the cell are repaired and maintained during aging. And that's the extra matrix or ECM. The most abundant protein in the ECM is collagen. So we measured in mice, it's 12 to 17% of the total protein. And just showing you an ECM, how it looks like. Um, <laughs> so you have an epithelium cell. Do you see my pointer? Up, up here. Um, and then this sheet here is called the basement membrane. And down here you have the connective tissues, right? And so basically if you look at the cell surface of an epithelium cell, so these are the receptors that bind the different collagens. This is the, um, the basement membrane here. And then this big huge thing is a collagen bundle going through it, right? And it's a pretty crowded space out there. Now, yes. It's, it's beautiful. I, I, I love it personally. So this is how the extra matrix looks like. And so why we were starting this? Because we, um, back in the days, we found actually that any of these interventions, when you apply them to C, C elegans, this is a lifespan of a normal worm for around you know, 30 days to live. You can double their lifespan. Uh, but if you knock down individual collagens, then you lose the longevity, right? So we found actually that this collagen remodeling is required and sufficient for longevity, right? And so that was the starting point of my lab to figure out how this collagen remodeling is working. And so I hypothesized, you know, three parts that's going on there. So mm -hmm. you have these collagens out there and usually the external matrix is a pretty dynamic system, meaning that if you train your muscle, your muscle will grow, your external matrix has to adapt, right? And the way it does it, it's by cleaving out different collagens or something is broken and these ones are degraded and then new collagens are synthesized. So we call this external matrix homeostasis. That is a process that works very well when you're young, but as many things during aging, it declines, right? And so with aging, what you're gonna get is fragmentation of these collagens, either to MMPs or other things. And then sugars are added to the extra matrix, like age-related uh, advanced glycation end products that start to crosslink. So what you get is a stiffer extra matrix, but mechanically weaker, right? And then also other things that uh, link into the extra matrix, like um, different proteins that say like garbage that's in there, right? And so the idea is that this turnover of the external matrix could we rejuvenate the, the, the damage that's happened to the external matrix. And so first we started to look at the balance, and so I showed you the organs, then we switched on to humans, right? We looked like we defined the external matrix, the, the proteins out there, and we looked at um, SNPs that are associated with disease. So there are 333 external matrix genes that are associated with diseases. And most of them are, you know, connective tissue diseases or common diseases. But to our surprise, actually, a large number of them, and so these are the light green ones, are actually age-related diseases. So basically the idea is actually that you can be born with a faulty extra matrix. And when you're young, you can maintain it pretty well. But when you're old, this maintains declines and the diseases actually then start to encompass. And so this is a real medical unmet need. So there's a therapeutic GAT to look at extra matrix homeostasis. So at the moment, there are only eight targets out of the 333 I've shown you in 27, 27 um, different clinical trials, most for fibrosis or cancer. And so I'm going to start into looking at this, this mechanism we're trying to assess ECM homeostasis. And um, the first thing we use is a systems biology approach. So we defined with Alexandra Napa, all the proteins are outside the cells, like these collagens and proteoglycans, right? And knowing these ones, we started to um, realize that each cell makes actually its own external matrix, right? And so we looked at single sequencing data and shown actually that, you know, if you just looked at the single sequencing data, 2% of that data is extra matrix genes that may form the extra matrix. And we were able to predict actually cell type and cell, ident cell, cell identity and cellular status just based on the composition of the extra cell matrix, which was pretty uh, remarkable to us. And that led actually to a concept uh, that I coined, it's called the matrotype. And the matrotype is the snapshot 
of the axial matrix composition that is associated or caused by a phenotype or physiological state, like health, disease, aging, longevity. So as a recap, you know, your, your cells, right, they are, you know, healthy or diseased, and it's somehow reflected in the composition of the axial matrix. So they're signaling going out of your cell and coming back in there. So there's a huge interaction, right? And so basically we can start reading this out just based on the composition. Now, if that's true, I thought, well, then we can actually develop drugs that, um, you know, could increase lifespan. And so basically what we've done, we took the GTEx data from different tissues in humans, stratified that by aging, and then looked at, you know, changes in the uh, exome matrix composition and looked for a youthful signature. How does a young exome matrix look like? and used that signature and went to the broad database, which are 1,300 trucks, and s looked for the same signatures there, right? And with that one, we predicted around 180 different uh, longevity trucks and then tested these with the little model organism C. elegans and were able to show that actually they increased the lifespan, right? So it's one, one application of, of the matrix type. And then we move these forwards, for example, now again, something in dermatology in a, in a clinical trial with you know 32 subjects with sun damaged skin they just get only that um, the supplement for two months and had improvements in skin uh, properties right so basically what i've shown you is that this composition exome matrix we can use um, you know also to for drug discovery and the last uh, the second part of my talk i want to go to the cross-linking at this uh, the part out here. Now, cross-linking you can measure by the tandem tail breakage time. So basically you get the collagen breakage time that's exponentially increasing with the mouse age. And so the question we start to say is if we go late in age, so at uh, 18 months of age in the mouse, can uh, you know these cross-linkings, are they just slowed, halted or reversed uh, with, with aging, right? And so for that we used uh, dietary restriction and rapamycin interventions at 18 months of mice and looked at 28 months. And basically what we've seen, you see from 10 months to 28 months, you see a huge increase in the cross-linking and the time they break. And these interventions like rapamycin, caloric restriction, or the combinations, it just slowed the accumulation there. So basically the problem, what I'm proposing here is, right, once you went old and you accumulated the damage, these interventions that we have at the moment, they don't really work on, on the cross-linking level or you know, on the stiffening of the exome matrix. And so with that, uh, th that's my summary. So the first part was the matriotype the, that is reflected that the homeostasis of the exome matrix we can use also for drug discovery. On the other way, um, what I showed you now is that these longevity interventions only slow the accumulation of um, collagen cross-linking, but not really reverse it. And so that's the open question we're trying to address here. And so that, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, can you speculate about the connection of remodeling of ECM with age to uh, methylation clocks? Yeah, that's uh, a wonderful question I wanted to ask also, Steve, be because I saw I in his, you know, the markers he's using are components of XR matrix. So a lot of those components like GDF, GDF15, um, you have Adam in there, you have all these different uh, components that either affect the external matrix, right? And that was, you know, is there a co correlation or causal link to it? That would be the next question to address there. Thanks, Thanks for meeting. <laughs> yeah, you said like 2% of the transcriptome can be used, like uh, other extracellular matrix genes, and those can be used to predict cell type. Um, I guess there's different like number of genes that you can define as the transcriptome. Like how many genes are you referring to, and how consistently are they expressed across in, different cells? Like? In this time, so the the, the composition of the dexometric itself is around 300 genes, right? In the you know. In, in, in the data sets, we found around 150. So we were able to do a prediction just with 150 uh, genes. And that was in chicken and mouse. So it works. Oh, okay. Two super quick questions. The first one is that, like, uh, can you explain any of the biologies or the plasma <coughs> experiments in the context of the ECM? And second, since, since the ACM proteins are very long lived, the proteins, right, because they're secreted, uh, they kind of, you know, uh, form a net. Yeah. So, from the, I don't, I don't remember how you call it, do you call it the metro? Metro side. Yeah. From that perspective, how, how do you correlate gene expression versus, you know, half life of the, of the proteins? 
They're very good questions. I start with the second one that will uh, hopefully give you a short answer to the first one. So, you know, it really depends. So if the cell is attached close to the XOR matrix, it's actually a very dynamic system. So use collagen remodel within 72 hours in the Achilles tendon, or some of the collagens actually are linked to circadian rhythm. So it's a very dynamic system. So you can really fast to read this out, right? And then- <coughs> and the, the expression of the protein cell? The protein cell. Both the turnover also, right? And so if it's far away, then of course you have this, this cross-linking problem which I mentioned. Now in these parabiosis things, you had TIMP3, right? Which is uh, inhibitor of the metalloproteinases. All these things coming out, how, uh, what's the connection there? Maybe it's just, you know, systemic signals that say you should remodel the extra matrix again or get this going, right? As I mentioned, the way I think of it, this homeostasis of these proteins is just lost during aging and you just, you, you know, get it going again, right? To get the signal to get it going. In that last uh, intervention that you tried, to, uh, three different interventions which ended up just slowing down the cross-linking process, have you tried combining them to see if that might reverse it? Yeah, so we did caloric restriction and rapamycin at the same time, and but this also was just a little bit slow, so unfortunately. So it was just not, it's not really re repairing or remodeling it, right? Um, and, and the question there is, it, so since that's the tail tandem, I mean, evolutionally, it's not so important for the mice, I mean, for the navigation. So it's like fixing gray hair. I mean, you can survive with gray hair or, you know, you can have longevity with gray hair. Um, so the question is whether we looked at the wrong spot or is it really not remodeled? Maybe the heart or, you know, you know, blood vessels would have been the better place to look at, but one, one thing after the other. Okay, we'll keep it at this, but please leave me with a question. A challenge, a frontier within the space of the ECM that you would love people to work on. Yeah, finding an intervention that could uh, remodel the extra matrix or rejuvenate the extra matrix. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so, so much. <laughs>